Hi, this is Jean Shambly Thomas, and welcome to Passing the Torch. I'm so glad that you're here today. Um, well, we've just concluded our series on dreams and visions, and now I want to move into a little bit of evangelism, what I want to call creative evangelism. Um, it's something, street evangelism is something I've done for pretty much 37 years, and so I want to give you a, a scriptural foundation, and then I want to share some stuff because uh, evangelism is so cool because you're linking up with the Holy Spirit. And when you really are going to come at it from a perspective that's really broad, I call it creative evangelism from A to Z, because when you're working with the Holy Spirit, who is the one that is doing most of the work, you're just partnering with him and your part is to hear and obey but the things that can happen are so incredibly dynamic it's awesome um god is really really good and all of the things in the scriptures i mean it all comes together and what i like about evangelism creative evangelism is that there's an intimacy with God. Evangelism is relational with God. Um, when you have the creator of the universe speaking into your spirit and telling you to do something and you obey it, your relationship just bumps up. Your intimacy with God just bumps up the more you hear and obey. Hear and obey. But let me go over a few scriptures, and I'm going to go over them probably quickly, because um, a lot of us know this. Proverbs 11.30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. I like that. I always wanted to be wise, still chasing after that. But when the Bible says, he who wins souls is wise, if I'm doing that, guess what? I have some some wisdom going on, and I want a lot more. I'm not done. <laughs> All right, 2 Timothy 4, 5. You can jot these down or turn with me quickly there. Um, this is Paul, and he's saying this to Timothy, who actually is a pastor, okay? Uh, he says, but you, Timothy, be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of evangelism, and fulfill your ministry. And the Lord says that to all of us. It doesn't matter what kind of ministry we're called to, or even if we're not called, we're all called to something. It might be helps, it might be service, it might be giving, it might be, you know, a, a pulpit ministry, it might not. But we all have a purpose, every single one of us. Don't ever let the enemy tell you or ever believe that God didn't create you for a purpose because he did. He created you specifically, and he designed good works for you to fulfill while you're on the earth. He has a blueprint for your life, and he alone can give it to you, why he made you, all right? But none of us get out of this. Do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. We're all supposed to do that work of an evangelist. Now, what is evangelism? It's simply sharing Jesus Christ with somebody else, sharing your testimony, what Jesus did for you, sharing scriptures, what the Bible says about Jesus and how he died for their sins. Um, that's the good news of the gospel. All right. So Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So we don't want to separate that from evangelism. We want to marry all of the scripture together because uh, the most powerful evangelical times that I have experienced have come because I was led by the Spirit of God. Okay, the Lord would tell me, go talk to this person. And there's several times suicides have been averted. Uh, I mean, you just don't know. Uh, what's going to happen. And I'm going to give you a lot of stories as we go because I think stories um, unpack it and, and help you see uh, what it looks like on a, in a regular life, just a regular day-to-day -day life. So, and the gifts of the Spirit as well, I'm going to talk about that, can be involved in evangelism. They're not just for inside the church. They're for everyday life. That's what God wants. All right, Mark 16, 15. 
And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now that's called the Great Commission. God tells all of us, go into the world and preach the gospel. And he wants us to learn how to do that and to be able to share our testimony and to learn how to present Christ. Um, now for me, I like to use tools. That's just me. I mean, I like to have tracks and things that explain things to people. But there's so much to it. Let me, let me like take all the pressure off of you right now, though, too. John 16, 7 through 11 says, Nevertheless, Jesus is speaking. I will tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. That's the Holy Spirit. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come... Now listen to what his job is, the Holy Spirit. When he, the Holy Spirit, has come, he will convict the world of sin. It's his job to convict the world of sin. That's a supernatural thing that you really can't do. You can participate in it, but it's a supernatural work. When somebody's eyes come open, they see that they need a Savior, okay? Maybe through what you say to them. But that work of opening their eyes and giving them the revelation, that is a direct work of the Holy Spirit. So when we work for God in this way, we are partnering with a work that the Holy Spirit is already doing. Okay? He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to the Father and you see me no more of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Okay, Satan is judged. He's going to hell and you don't want to go with him. <laughs> okay, these are things that the Bible specifically says are the Holy Spirit's job. Okay, so when God begins to use you and the two kinds of evangelism I'm going to talk about, I may do it in one or two today. We'll see how fast I can get through this, is friendship evangelism. And that is evangelism uh, where these are people in your world. These are people at your work, your co-workers, your family, your relatives, your neighbors. These are people that you're going to see more than one time. And I'm going to call the other, for lack of a better word, stranger evangelism. Okay, You kind of know God's crossed your path with them and you've got the one shot. You know, you've got 60 seconds a few minutes, unless they are willing to sit down and talk with you. Um, so you've got that. Now, we know in the scriptures, there's another one, and I'm, I think, I'm not sure where I wrote it down. But Paul says, um, I planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So you never know when you're entering into a situation if you're planting a seed, you might be watering a seed. And on occasion, you get the blessed event of praying with someone to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And I'm talking about outside the church walls. <laughs> oh, I remember this girl came to my door. She got locked out of my her apartment, and she just was standing there in a bathrobe knocking on my door. And... Um, she came in, she, I let her use my phone, she called a friend to bring her key, a relative, I think. And while she was there, I just began to, she said she was sick. And I said, well, can I pray for you? She said, yeah, sure. So long story short, as we talked and I prayed for her, she opened all the way up and let me pray for her, let her in a sinner's prayer right there in my apartment in her pink bathrobe. And, um, it was a beautiful thing because when we were done, she looked at me and she said, I thought you had to be at the altar of a church in your Sunday school clothes, you know, before you could get saved. And I laughed. I said, no, you just got it right here, right now. And God is everywhere. All right. Actually, you know, it should be happening all over the place. Um, and God will use us that way when we make ourselves available. Now, I'm going to tell you some stories. I want to go back to, um, for the, many, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, Romans 8, 14. 
and I'm going to tell you a story. This happened, uh, I was about 24 years old when this happened, but um, I was seeking the Lord, and I was like, God, um, I, I want to be led by the Spirit. Teach me how to be led by the Spirit. So I was in my hometown, and I'm driving around, and I get the thought, you know, why don't you go to Lakewood Park? And I thought, hmm, you know, I, I just didn't, didn't really want to, so I blew it off. So a few hours later, again, I got that thought, you know, why don't you go to Lakewood Park? And I'm like, oh, you know, maybe I'll go there later. And then the third time the thought came, and I thought, maybe this isn't my own thought. This is the third time today I thought about going to this park. So I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, I think this maybe is you. So I went to the park, and as I pulled in, now I'm not being foolish or uh, it's a public park, lots of people around, it, you know, it was a safe place and environment. But I pulled in and my eyes fell right on this car and I knew that the guy sitting in this car was who I was supposed to talk to. So I walked over to the car and most of the time I really don't know what to say, but I believe God, when I open my mouth, he will fill it. And if you remember in the scriptures, God even told the apostles at one point, don't plan ahead of time what you're going to say. I when I bring you before kings, I'll give you in that hour what you're going to say. So I just stand on faith in that. And for me, honesty is the best policy. I walked up to this guy and I said, look, I feel like God really wanted me to come tell you just this simple, that, that he loves you. And then I just let it flow from there. Now the guy burst into tears. Just, and he said, lady, you have no idea. And he was just weeping. You have no idea. And so I just let him talk. And he said, you know, yesterday my girlfriend broke up with me. This morning I went to work and I got fired. And he said, you know, I've got a loaded shotgun sitting on the couch or the chair at home, ready to blow my head off. And he said, I thought to myself, well, I'll go to the park. I'll smoke my last pack of cigarettes. And when I'm done, I'm blowing my head off. And God brought me right there, you see. And um, he prayed, uh, prayed with me to receive Jesus as his Lord. And, oh, he was just squeezing my hand. That boy was so ready to be born again. And it's beautiful. He ended up coming to the church. He met me at the church later on in the week. But God stopped a suicide because I obeyed him. That's awesome. You know, from that point on in my life, I was hooked for life. And actually, that's happened more than once. Um, there was another time when I was on the job. And I would walk past a guy that worked in the warehouse. And I walked past him and down on the inside of me. Now, this is the gift of the word of knowledge. I've taught that before. You can go back and look at my other teachings. I did a whole teaching on the word of knowledge. Okay, but down, it's a word of God's knowledge. It's like, this is no way Gene could know this. Okay, I walked past him and down on the inside of me, I heard the word suicide. So I thought, wow. And I walked off and I'm like, God, was that you? Was that me? Was that my thought? Was that your thought? And a little bit later, uh, he came up front and he walked past. And again, I heard it on the inside of me, suicide. So I'm like, okay, I, I got to, you know, at this point, I wasn't used to evangelism. I was fairly new at it. Um, I called a friend and I said, look, I'm hearing this about this guy. I said, would you pray with me for boldness? Just agree with me in prayer for boldness so that I'm just going to go talk to this guy and just say it. So we prayed and I went to the warehouse. I had my little booklet. Like I said, I like tools called the new birth. And it was a very simple explanation of how to be born again. But I walked back there and I walked up to him. Now, I never know what to say. I just walked up to him and I said, hey, you know, I just really felt like God wanted me to come tell you he loves you. Um, he's thinking about you. And um, I really felt like he said, maybe you've been thinking about suicide. So he turns a nice shade of complete white because he's like, how did you know that? How did you know that? He said, I've got a rope in my trunk. I've got the place picked out. And he said, and I I'm, had planned to do it in two days on Saturday. When, gonna, when I'm off work, I'm going to go do it Saturday. So I'm like, wow, Lord. 
So he knew immediately that God was intervening. You see, it's not about you and I really. This is about God intervening in somebody's life and you get the blessed privilege of being part of that. You can choose to seek God to be a part of this because God is after people night and day. The Holy Spirit's already working on people's lives and you sometimes get to enter in and be a part of that. Okay, so long story short, he got born again and you know, the poor fellow, his parents were Mormon. They were trying to force him to go on a two year uh, missionary trip and he just wasn't feeling like he could do that and that there was no hope. And then when he saw that salvation was not by works and that salvation is a free gift from Jesus Christ and what he had done, he was set free. He wasn't under that bondage. So that conversation not only stopped him from suicide, it set him free from bondage and he was able to get born again and receive Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. That's awesome. That is so awesome. And really, people, you can do this, okay? I, I honestly will say, I've been doing this on and off for 37 years and I bumble my way through every one. There's usually never a time now, I will walk by somebody or I know, I'll just feel God tugging my heart or he'll say this one and I just go for it. I don't worry about what I'm going to say because I know it's not my work. It's not my work. It's not my power. I'm not the one that opens the eyes of their understanding. This is God's work. I just need to do my part and present to them the good news about Jesus. And, you know, sometimes I just, like the other day, um, I was at the grocery store. I just carry tracks and CDs in my purse and stuff. There was a woman and she just looked really down. She was using her food stamps and my heart went out to her. And when I went to the parking lot, her car was parked right next to mine. So I go out there and I'm like, Lord, is this, is this a woman you want me to talk to? And I almost wasn't sure, but I'm like, you know, I'm going to not risk this. So I went up to her and I said, hi, how you doing? You know, um, these are like two things I carry in my purse. Can you see? This is a salvation track. If somebody reads this little thing, okay, it's beautiful, isn't it? You can get this at printmytrack.com. I made these uh, and whoops, it's called True Love. And I think the company is another name, but if you put printmytrack.com, I think you'll be able to get there. I have this in my purse, which is the whole gospel. You can tell one person can read that in like a minute and a half at the most, and they will absolutely know how to be born again. They've got everything they need right there. So I like to keep these because you can't always stop a person and, and have they don't have time for a talk. But if they take this with them and they read it, it's got all the information how, how to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And then I also, just me, I like to carry my music. And But I walk up to this woman and I said, hi, how you doing? You know, and she said, oh, you know, and I said, look, I'm giving away these CDs. You know, I do music. I said, well, do you like music? She said, yeah. And so I handed it to her and she looked at it and she goes, oh, this is Christian, isn't it? And then she teared up, and tears began to stream down her eyes. And she said, you have no idea. She said, I'm having such a hard time. And I just looked at her, and I said, sweetheart, God knows. He knew that, and he loves you. And um, so she said, thank you, thank you. And I said, can I pray with you about anything? Because I was opening up, but she was kind of shy. She said, no, thank you, but I appreciate this very much. And I knew she was going to get in the car and the music was going to minister to her for the next 30 minutes. And I knew that as I walked away, the Holy Spirit was all over her. He was doing His work. Because you, if you always remember, it's His work. Okay? So it, the pressure's not on you and I. It's just for us to hear and obey. Um, just hear and obey. And then he does the salvation work. That's his job. 
And when I walk away from somebody, I, a lot of times it's like, okay, I know I'm never going to see this woman again. You know, I say a prayer for her and then I cast my care on the Lord. And I usually get their name and I pray for them, you know, as the Lord brings them to my remembrance. Or I'll never forget her name, Sarah. And every now, I pray for her a lot because that was a divine appointment at a time when she needed it the most. That's why I really enjoy uh, what I call stranger evangelism. Now, I do it safely. I do it in public. And, um, you know, it's, it's just awesome. I, I can't tell you all the experiences that I've had, but I just want to give that to you for stranger evangelism, street evangelism, you can call it. Um, now, the other kind is friendship evangelism. And I'm going to cover a little bit of this and give you a few examples, and then we'll close up for today. I don't want to go too long. So let me give you examples of friendship evangelism. These are people that you're around. These are colleagues, coworkers, neighbors, family members, friends. Um, and, and you don't have to, like, get her done, you know, all at once. You can, you can actually begin to pray for them. And then you watch for God to open, to give you an opening to where you can slide a message in. Um, a lot of times people need to see your Christianity before they can hear it. And I'll give you an example of that. When I was uh, managing an apartment complex, there was a man that lived next door to me. Now, he was a construction worker. He was a single dad raising two kids. She, The girl was six and the boy was about 12. And... Uh, I would walk by, hi, how you doing, you know, because my apartment was right next to theirs. And he was out there smoking a cigarette a lot of the time. And so one of the days I just said, hey, you know, we're having something at our church. Would you like to come? And he said, oh, you know, no, thank you. You know, I'm kind of not into that. I said, okay. So I just kept praying. And I think maybe I asked him one, one time. And then the Lord led me to actually give put some Bibles with a sticky note on it. Say, I thought you and Paul, might, your son, might enjoy this. And I put it up against the, the door. And uh, I didn't know. It just disappeared. I didn't say anything about it. I did find out later he and his son started reading the Bible together, he told me. Um, so the Holy Spirit's at work, you know. And I'm just doing my little part. Now here's the Holy Spirit really at work. Now, he's, he didn't want to go to church, and he didn't want to talk to me about God until his truck broke down. Now, I wonder who might have done that. So his truck broke down, and he came next door kind of exasperated. And he said, look, I'll pay you, you know, I'll, I'll pay for your gas, you know, and your time. And he said, but I need somebody to take my daughter my, to, to school for about a week when the, until the park comes in, a week, maybe a week and a half at the most. I said, no problem. I'd be happy to take her. And, um, you know, I said, and I'm not going to take money. I don't want money for that. You know, you're, you're a neighbor. And so I took the little girl to her school. And the next time I asked him, not immediately, I waited. I said, would you like to come to church with us? And he said, <laughs> yes. When, what time, and where is it at? You know, it's like, yes, yes. But you see, he needed to see my Christianity was real before he could hear that it was real. Now, you know, he may have already been saved, but I know his whole family saved and he adopted kids and they're all, you know, I mean, this just rippled throughout generations, actually, the salvation of Christ. And he, he may have already known the Lord. I know he was reading the Bible, but you know, God works in mysterious ways, even if it's breaking somebody's truck down to get them where he needs them, okay? Um, it's so funny. There was this one time, I got to show you, this was like a few weeks ago, and I'm driving back from uh, Tennessee, actually, and I'm driving, and I was trying to get off on this exit because I needed gas really bad, and it's like these cars kept blocking me, and I'm like, what is the deal with these rude people? So I had to go to the next off-ramp, and I went to the next off-ramp, and I pulled over, and I got gas at that place. 
Well, at that point, this woman walks up to me, and I, I had this belt on, and she walked up and started talking to me, and she just started pouring out, well, I'm having surgery tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, she just, she came to me, and I was able to minister to her. I gave her music and encouragement, and I prayed for her, you know, and in the car and stuff, and, um, but I have to look and think, I really bet that the angels were blocking my ability to get off at that off ramp because my divine appointment was at the next one and when you become aware of it angels of God work in getting people saved the angels of God are at work and the more you pray especially the more you pray in the spirit the more you pray in other tongues the Bible says we pray uh, in tongues of men and tongues of angels so the Holy Spirit may be praying through you these divine setups, and the more you pray, the more you see them. I mean, that's been my experience. The more time I give to praying in the Spirit, the more my life becomes like the book of Acts. These divine appointments just start happening. And, you know, they, they come to me a lot of times. I'm not even doing it. It's amazing. There's times where God will say, see that person, that one. And then there's other times where they actually will come to me. Um, and, and God just sets it up. But the friendship evangelism, that was how the thing worked with the neighbor. It was a nice, slow, didn't have to work. And every individual is different. And God knows how to unlock the person's heart. So I really encourage you, whether it's a neighbor, whether it's a coworker, um, there's coworkers where God would put on my heart a specific book to give to them, a Christian book that had truth in it. And that would speak to them and begin to open the doors for their, you know, for them to receive Christ. It's a creative work when you're working with God. Don't put him in a box, you know. Um, you know, I do like the Romans Road, you know, a lot of time. I mean, but that's usually what's in the track and stuff. So you need the scriptures and the tools to do the work with. But what I really want to emphasize today and I'm going to end here, is that it's a creative work. And every person is unique, and you are unique. You may find your own special way to evangelize. Um, and God will show you. But with each person, you know, there's timing. There is, you know, He knows. And your job is to be available and to hear and obey. And pray for boldness. My goodness, people. The Apostle Paul would write letters to the church and say, pray that I would have boldness to say what I need to say. You know, um, I'll have to look that up for you next time where that is. But if Paul needed prayers for boldness, we do too. So ask the Lord to give you boldness. Um, when I started, I was the shyest person in the world. Um, I could barely leave a track in a bathroom somebody where nobody was looking because there's spiritual warfare over you to stop you from doing this. Um, I remember I went on campus and I was just going to leave a salvation track, you know, in one of the bathrooms in the stall. And I prayed over it. But all this war, you can't do this. You're going to get in trouble. Don't leave it. You know, all this warfare to stop me from leaving this because Satan knew if somebody gets this, this has everything they, know they need to be born again. So I would pray over it, say, Lord, get the right person. Don't let Satan steal this. Don't let it be thrown away. And I left and cast my care on the Lord. Now, I'll never know till I get to heaven, you know, how many people the Holy Spirit used that with. I can't wait. I look forward to that. Um, because I, that's just something I've been involved in for 37 years. Every now and then you will get a glimpse. God will show you some of the results. But, you know, it's fun, people. It's exciting. And I really pray that you will begin to talk to God about your part in doing the work of an evangelist because you have a part to play, whether it's A to Z. I had this 76-year-old woman that, you know, she didn't do a lot, but she, she went to the library. And so when I gave her these tracts, she went to the library and she prayed 
God, show me what book to put it in. She put the track in the book, and then she put the book to her heart, and she said, Lord, bring the right person to pick this up. In Jesus' name, and I pray that they would be born again. Amen. So this 76-year-old lady just became an evangelist, okay? It can be so easy, and it can be dramatic where the gifts of the Spirit are talking to you, and you know something about somebody, and you walk up and blow them out of the water and just demonstrate God. So it's wonderful, and I pray, uh, let me do pray as we end today. Father, I pray you take this word, and you begin to bring to people's minds certain neighbors, people, co-workers, people in their world that you want them to start praying for and looking for how you're going to open the door to minister to them. And Lord, for those that are going to enter, engage in uh, evangelism, street evangelism, that you would train them, Lord, that you would let them hear your voice, teach them to hear and obey. And I thank you that through this, they will bear much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. And that is one scripture I'm going to read to you before we go in parting. I know I have it. <laughs> all right. Sorry about that. I got all these pages and notes. I just came from um, teaching this in another place. Lord, where is it? Um, how am I not seeing? Okay. Okay, for I am not seeing it. How is this? I must be missing a page. Anyways, it says, oh, thank you. Uh, John 15, 16. Thank you for your patience. I'm sorry. I got like six pages sitting here. Um, all right. John 15, 16. And I say this to you. Okay. You, Jesus says this to you. The word says this to you. You did not choose me, Jesus says, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit and fruit that lasts and remains. That's his word. He chose us. He chose us. And he chose us to bear fruit. So God bless you. You have a great work week, work week, week. And be open and start talking to God about how you can take part in the Great Commission. All right. God bless you. We'll see you next time.